the organizers of online fourth drug discovery summit having me to talk to you about this topic my name is frank Liu, and um, i'm with novaputics and today i would like to talk to you about artificial intelligence and drug discovery industry and before i start i want to thank the organizers of online fourth drug discovery summit having me to talk to you about this topic um as is a timely topic um, and, um, and and today before i start i would I like to talk to you talk about, about artificial intelligence the, uh, the first slide is um that's my makeshift office during this pandemic um i spend a lot of time there uh, and as many of you probably shared a similar experience having to work from home uh, during this time. But uh, I hope everybody is safe. And uh, with that being said, I'd like to move to this next slide. Um, so in general, uh, the current drug research and development costs and process is, is very high and it takes a long time. So essentially, discovering and developing safe and effective drugs is a challenging undertaking that can take between 10 to 15 years and roughly can cost from one to $1.5 billion. And I have seen figures that uh, often involves in cardiovascular risk drugs that, um, that will be um, around the cost of about $3 billion. So it can be much higher um, and um, it, it, it costs so much burden in the industry. And, um, and the drug developmental process requires very sophisticated technologies and a, a broad array of medical and laboratory expertise and often include disease target identification, then it moves to preclinical evaluation and then um, uh, then there will be a need for toxicology and safety testing of the potential hits. And then, and then uh, at the end of the day, it's about how it will work in human. So then we wanted to do clinical trial design and implementations. And roughly, uh, this is for small molecules now, for every 5,000 to 10,000 potential compounds that are evaluated, maybe one receive approval from the, uh, from the FDA. So it is, uh, it is a very, very difficult uh, and costly journey to develop a successful drug. And interestingly, um, if I may sum up the, um, the pharma landscape in the past, say, uh, 25 years. Now, on the right side of your screen, it has a chart that basically outlines the mergers and acquisitions profile between 1995 to 2015 and and in sum um what this is showing you is that that pharma mna we went from about 60 pharma that was significant size uh down to less than 10 in just 20 years and the period of 1995 to 2015 now in the past five years there were also new uh, a few uh, significant uh, mergers and acquisitions for example bristol my bristol myers squibb um, just purchased celgene acquired celgene in 2019 for 74 billion dollars and elegant um, purchased uh, will merge with octavis in 2015 for 63 billion dollars and Takeda um, also purchased Shire in 2018 for $58.6 billion. So this is just the top three lar larger um, pharmaceutical industry mergers and acquisitions. Um, and uh, there are plenty more that in the, the dollar amount of billion dollars range. So what this is telling you is that industry is driven to consolidate, to merge, to uh, in a way, to increase efficiency in drug development and cut down the cost. 
and at the end of the day, for big pharma, it's about profit. Um, and profitability is deeply governed by the efficiency of the programs. So, so needless to say, it is acknowledged and understood that current clinical trial process, which is part of the drug developmental process, that in that stage alone has high friction and uh, among different stakeholders. Now, this is also true for early stage of drug development and consistently all the way through. So the stakeholders in, from the discovery to the end, um, often the interaction had tremendous frictions. And all these frictions um, were posed needless challenges, um, such as rising costs and lack of a secure systematic approach, eventually for data management, because this is very important for stakeholders to be able to share data with trust and uh, knowing that it's not being tempered and knowing that it's as close to real time as possible being recorded. Uh, otherwise, um, there's always the immutability issue. Um, so, so therefore, um, eventual adoption of technological innovations will surely disrupt the conventional drug developmental scheme, and um, which will dramatically increase efficiency and decrease cost. And in this, in this um, slide, I like to kind of present to you a pyramid kind of thinking. On the on the bottom you have blockchain. Uh, blockchain, which is um, a hyperledger um, that records data with um, with a building immunity and building trust. Um, and, um, and I will elaborate on that throughout this presentation because it is actually the key component that I think it's very important even we, before we can talk about artificial intelligence. So that is going to be the key um, topic th throughout until the end of this conversation. Uh, then in the middle, you have machine learning, which is harvesting the, the data that pick up by blockchain and everything and try to make, organize them and, and make them sensible. And then on top of the food, uh, the pyramid, you have the artificial intelligence, which is very important in, say, inputting, uh, be able for the machine to learn and input with humans um, way of interpretation and then and then impose certain way of looking at things for the for the specific uh, need of a project and and hopefully that through AI intelligent learning that that the, that that this process can be automated in a way that's accurate and 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 uh, and successful for a, a drug developmental program. So essentially, blockchain is really a hyperledger spreadsheet that's stored in decentralized clouds. Um, and I will um, explain a little more below, is that transactional records are created and are validated globally by decentralized participating computers in the network called miners. And the disputed nature of the ledger makes it impossible to make simultaneous changes to all copies of the ledger and to further safeguard against both internal and external attacks. Therefore, validated transactions are permanently and immutable. stored. The owner of the transaction has the power to move anything of value freely instantaneously without borders of intermediaries. And examples of blockchain applications uh, have been widely used today in financial transactions, medical records, land titles, crowdfunding, healthcare, supply chain, and et cetera. Blockchain components. The, this distributed ledger, which is stores data and housed on the system of all trusted parties in the network. Public backslash private key cryptography 
the key controls information assets that has been encrypted onto the blockchain, providing access to data while simultaneous validating their identity. Consensus. This is the mechanism by the participating parties in the blockchain network to validate that data being placed on the blockchain is from a trusted source. Participants using the cryptograph proof. For example, prove the work or proof of stake. Then you have the smart contract. These are executable pieces of code that perform a function such as issuing and payment or transferring documents when the conditions of transactions are met. And the, uh, so the big picture is really about the democratizing data. Um, so you have a centralized old internet, old data storage kind of architecture currently existing, such as YouTube, Amazon, Google, and etc. And then you have the decentralized type of data setting, such as Bitcoin, Ethereum, ICOs, which stands for Initial Coin Offering, which most of the time, these ICOs are built on smart contracts that 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 piggyback of Ethereum platform, but there are other platforms also use uh, provide smart contracts, which then allows ICO to be formed. Um, those deserve many many hours of conversation or a discussion or talk. So I I I would just kind of mention it here. So to kind of sum up what we just talk about is on blockchain in clinical trials. Blockchain technology could positively impact clinical trial supply chain by improving the traceability of medications from active pharmaceutical ingredients to patient in real time. It has a built-in trust system due to crypto key and developed consensus systems. This facilitates the gathering of patient level data in a HIPAA compliant manner this is done by having patients and other individuals participating in the network record data to the blockchain, which can move the information to appropriate systems and groups in access to review the data. The data is aud auditable, trackable, immutable, and can help create a longitudinal records of a patient health status. The validating nature of this technology will no doubt benefit the patient, sponsor, and all stakeholders eliminating frictions and hopefully cost and time. So this is a illustration quickly. I'm sorry, I'm short on time. I apologize for that. So this is a centralized, you know, traditional clinical trial database flow. It's in the center of coordinating center. On the bottom, the information flowing from the PI, from the subject, and then, then you distribute in almost parallel, parallel fashion. Um, but not always in terms uh, in sync. So, and then decentralized uh, database structure that can be communicated in real time in a robust manner is that everyone is connected in a way that information can be shared and distributed in real time. However, um, the only the stakeholders that at each juncture that are relevant to that should be exposed to information will be allowed to do it, and this can be coded by through a smart contract with full permission. So with great promise, blockchain technology has many advantages in security, data protection, and ability to bridge the disparate systems that manufacturers, CROs, and study site utilize. This technology has the benefit of immediate information access without having all the data located in one place, thus making it less vulnerable to external internal attacks. A combination of process serialization and blockchain technology holds the key to ensuring clinical trials integrity to overcome a mobile challenge. It provides an assurance that missing in the industry today by leveraging technology and knowledge of tomorrow. So having talked about a lot of ideas in blockchain and how they work and how could they mean in drug development and mainly I kind of focus my talk on the idea of clinical trials because it is a most costly, actually most costly process of the um, of a drug development, uh, surprisingly so, because you would think that discovery and, and validation concept approval 
um, that kind of process would be costly. Um, but it's actually in the clinical trial part, it gets very expensive because it involves human lives, it involves multiple centers. It, it, uh, in today's world, we talk about decentralized trials. So it adds costs if the technologies are not properly applied. So um, I would like to leave you um, with this slide and uh, mainly that um, for you who doesn't, who, who doesn't know that who Warren Buffett is, he's a legendary investor and business owner. And um, so he said, when hiring someone, you're looking for three things. Generally, in a person, you're looking for intelligence, energy, and integrity. And um, however, if they don't have the last one, integrity, uh, don't even bother with the first two. So if you can take the idea and then apply the same principle in database that you use for machine learning and also artificial intelligence analysis, um, it's very true because when constructing a data